Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Civilization VI. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be playing with JNR's Urban Complexity Mod Pack to try and see out uh, how, how this mod changes the game. It's been a while since we've done a modded series, and so I figured I would, uh, you know, have a look at this. Now, what this does basically is it reworks every single district in the game it expands your choices it makes the choices different and more interesting for example if we take a look at the campus expansion here rather than there just being a single library to choose from you get to choose from the library or the school this library gives you plus one science per era since this building was last built or repaired and then the school gives you an extra specialist slot and an extra science yield for specialists so that means this is just much better if you have a lot of food in the um in the in the in the school city you can pump a lot more of your uh you know city's citizens into the campus district itself whereas the library one is more if you rush the campus you could probably get more value out of rushing the um or rushing the campus and the library and getting it done before the ancient era is through and that's going to be what you see for a lot of these things like just for the sake of it let's open the industry screen um you have the water mill the windmill the workshop the manufactory the water mill gives you uh, plus one production if it's uh, adjacent if the industrial zone is adjacent to the river and it gives you plus one production per district in the city built next to a river and it's cheaper than the windmill whereas the windmill gives you plus one production to its base yield if it's built on a hill and the uh, industrial zone also receives plus one production to its base yield if it's built next to a coast so there's a few different sort of ways you can do things and it, it just gives you choices it changes the way the game works there's freshwater infrastructure it changes to the power changes to how happiness is generated from districts and a lot of this is just going to be exploring and learning about how all of this works and so because we're going to be doing more of a learning game i'm going to drop the difficulty down to a mortal just so i have a little bit more time and a little bit less pressure on me when i'm exploring a new mod pack i'll drop that difficulty level just down one notch because that takes away one settler from the ai it takes away a small percentage of their bonuses and it'll give me a little bit more time to uh to get to grips with all the mechanics I've been doing a lot of um, Pangaea games and continents and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to do a continents and islands game here just to have slightly bigger land masses, all that sort of jazz. I'll do a, a standard size map, standard everything basically, just the difficulty changed. I'm also not going to activate any extra game modes with the exception of Barbarian Clans because I think that one is just like the most fun. I guess I may consider putting in Apocalypse mode, um, but I i kind of want to just play with as baseline a game as possible so i'm even going to knock disaster intensity down to down to zero just to have a very very standard low rng game but yeah here is the game random seed and the game map seed i don't know if that's going to work with these mods you probably by the time you see this video it, you know the mods will be changed and the outcome of those seeds will probably be different but i'm also just playing with a completely random sieve so i could literally get anyone um even someone who i've played recently and uh, that's just who we're gonna go with you know, I was going to make an exception for the Mary because I thought I had played them recently, but I think I played them in a live stream, which I guess doesn't really count the same. So I'm just I'm just going to take the Mary. I, I randomly rolled them and I will take them. Boom, here we are. We get started. We get plus two error score because we are, of course, the Mary and we start off with shipbuilding. Uh, now, having a look at this, you can see we have some possible land over here to our north and where are we on the map i can't quite tell okay we're i would say we're towards the northern end of the map so we know the north pole is to our northeast or or, or to the north rather well obviously but we know it's like it's close right we're not far from it because you can see the edge of the map over here i mean no matter where you are the north pole is to the north of you like that's just what the north pole is so like obviously that was a dumb thing for me to say we did find a tribal village and we didn't find amazing land we did find some reefs and stuff like that and the thing about the maori is you can kind of get away with like maybe four or five turns on the water okay there's good land to my north i'm gonna i'm gonna just like blindly head that way because there's a ton of tribal village as well uh and in fact actually there's a couple of fish resources here which are appealing to me if there was one near the coast maybe uh man that would just turn out to be desert wouldn't it uh, you know what here's a good spot right over there by these pearls i'll, I'll make my way there Unfortunately, we have been five turns. Oh, and we found six. Okay, yeah. All right. 
decision made. I am settling here. One hundred percent. Look at those tiles. This is actually an incredible start. Never mind. We're off to a great start. I was gonna say things aren't looking so great for us because we wandered around the ocean for so long, but never mind. I was totally, totally wrong. Now the cool thing about the Maori is that they get plus two science and plus two culture per turn before they ever settle their first city, which basically means technically we're actually earning more culture than most civs. You'll see here, when we settle our actual city, our culture went to 2.5, but that's because we, um, we have, we're working this tile. Technically our culture should be like 1.5. So for most of the game there, we're actually making more culture than other civs. Now the cool thing about the Maori as well is when you settle your first city, you also gain a free builder and plus one population. And the palace also gives you plus three housing and plus one amenity. So the Maori are actually quite good at building up a relatively large and productive capital city. And I'm also gonna go ahead and improve those pearls because we're already working them. And it is the second best tile I have in my capital. Plus there's a little bit of faith on there that'll get me a pantheon. So we'll go ahead and pop a fishing boat on there, which also triggered a culture bomb, which is another one of the abilities that the Maori have. I kind of wish I had Sucretax Oceans enabled now but i i wanted to keep just one mod pack at a time sort of a thing um yeah so we also begin the game with sailing and shipbuilding which allows us to embark upon the ocean and stuff like that and uh embarked units gain plus two movement unapproved woods and rainforest are plus one production and additional plus one production and plus two production from conservation the fishing boats give us plus one food and culture bomb we can't get great riders but we do have access to the toa and the mare which is our unique theater square building that gives us plus one culture and plus one fate to all of the city's tiles with a passable feature or natural wonder and after flood is researched all of those tiles will give us plus one tourism so we want to get a lot of cities out and we want to get a lot of theater squares out and we want to capture a lot of land Oh, wow. So the mill race automatically created in every city with an industrial zone adjacent to a river. Interesting. So I think this is a this is like a dummy building that is triggered when you build an industrial zone next to a river so that you can trigger the um, industrial zone building uh, bonuses, I reckon. Yeah, that's my I think that's what that is. So we have a few choices we can go for as coupe. Now we start off with a builder, which is quite a few turns in production that we save over other civilizations. We have strong growth. We have relatively weak production. We could potentially buy a tile here. Um, scouts are actually usually really, really good for coupe because you get code of laws relatively quickly, um, which means you can plug in the scout bonuses and your capital is ahead and you can explore the ocean that you tend to get a lot of tribal villages, even though you settle a little bit later than the average person. Now, the question is what kind of a game? We definitely want to go for a tourism game. And since we're playing coupe, we want to definitely focus on naval stuff. So that means I, I'm thinking like holy sites and harbors are probably the direction we want to go. And that's going to be like two of our core districts. And then maybe our third core district will be um, the theater square or civic square, as it's called here. And we also have a natural wonder. So that kind of also pushes me in the direction of um of theater square stuff so i do have a, i do have a couple of small ui mods in i have the quick deal mod i have the super tax simple ui adjustments and i have the detailed map tax mod and those are the only three i'm going to use but i'm thinking i could harvest this pop a holy site in there both of those are plus three districts which is really really valuable now i do give up a tile but i think plus three faith here is worth it i don't know if you feel the same way. Do I pick this up with my warrior or do I wait? You know what, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna let my, I'm gonna let my scouts pick that up because I wanna level my scouts up. Oh, I can build a fishery, interesting. Um, is that something from the mod? I wonder, perhaps. I think the fish, I think the fishery is re reworked in the mod. So let's have a look at it here. Plus one food to fisheries and cities with at least one improved fishery source, plus two gold or one crab plus one additional food for each ad ad adjacent sea resource and plus two gold for each adjacent sea res resource once plastic is researched. So this is a way, so it looks like this just becomes a basic tile improvement that you unlock a shipbuilding in this mod, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if I want a fishery, although here, if I'm gonna get a fishery, this isn't a bad spot. It will theoretically be a plus three food tile once I have this pearls online. It gives me another improved tile, maybe not the best, although it's a pretty good tile. All things considered, a lot of a lot of a lot of farm farmage over here. The question is, do I want those farm triangles, or do I just kind of accept that I don't? The question is, do I want to improve a farm to get access to the paddy field? Oh, interesting. Paddy field at least one improved rice. Interesting. There's all sorts of cool stuff we can explore here. Let's pop you back up on the city. 
All right, there's Code of Laws. We're going to go ahead and plug in Survey for our Scouts. We already are making Faith, so we don't need the Faith from God King, although it would get us our Pantheon faster. And Fishboat Pantheon wouldn't be too bad here. Um, I feel like every game I go for Fishboat Pantheon. I need to like do some more land maps where I don't go naval stuff. But yeah, I'll take the production because we already have um, Faith Income and... I reckon I reckon we go in the craftsmanship direction. I'm going to just I'm not going to be looking too far into the tech tree because I, again, I'm rediscovering the game with this mod. I like the idea of trader. I also like the idea of 30% production towards builders because I'd like to have my tiles be pretty improved. You are growing to the wheat and I think I will improve the wheat for the sake of a boost and getting the third tile improved, which will give me craftsmanship. So I think that makes sense. A lot of the tile like the um tech boosting stuff is all the same oh man there's so many tribal villages here my scouts are gonna a have a field day um astrology. there's astrology now in order to actually place that i will need pottery and i think i would like to go for a religion this game as the mary because i could maybe be able I, I could maybe do an interesting religion you know pop you over here pop you up here great great you grab that masonry boosted you got 10 xp so i'll start bringing my warrior back just to keep any barbs away Right, where was the next one? I think you were here. So I'll get you to move over there. There's pottery. So now that we have pottery, I'm going to come into the city and place the holy site. I thought you needed pottery to harvest. Allows harvesting of bonus resources improved by farms. Harvest require... Can you not place things down anymore? Huh. I wonder if they changed that. Let's buy a tile and have a look here. Weird. Do I have to use a builder to do that? I don't like that if so, because that delays my... my um my holy site by by quite a few turns actually not a huge fan of that grab mining um i'll grab irrigation in case it's actually that technology that'll allow me to place it you step here take your boost step here uh looks like a mixture of hills and yeah i think i'll take i think i'll take hill walking here so faster movement on hill terrain and then this scout i'm going to send it to the water to start picking up these tribal villages and then my warrior will do the job of protecting my capital all right, cool. I wonder, is anyone actually building great profits? Nobody has a great profit construction yet. Um, disperse a barbarian outpost. Let's get to work on foreign trade. You come this way. You head over here. Oh, we found a barbarian town. I would like to hire a unit from it. We picked up that tribal village. I think I got a little bit of gold from that. What do you get from this? A free builder. Okay, that might actually be enough. So I can't actually harvest this. Weird. <gasps> oh my god, I just remembered. Resources can't be harvested when you're playing coupe. Oh, that's right. Okay. So that means this is going to be a farm triangle here. Oh, so that means my, my holy site actually has to go here. Interesting. All right. Hmm. That makes things a little bit more complicated for me. I can make it work. If I do something like this. Yeah, okay. That changes things. That means I have to like, I'm going to put pins on resources, basic ones, because I have to plan my empire around those. Ah, I completely forgot. Devastated. Absolutely devastated by that information. Now, I thought there was another tribal village down here somewhere. Okay, there's a camp here being attacked. If I could get the gold, I would love to buy a warrior from them. And we found Muscat. Now, that's cool. Muscat are a commercial city-state. They give us gold on our markets, mint, emporiums, and lighthouses as well as all the tier two and tier three buildings. They also give us plus one uh, amenity in cities with a commercial hub. I feel like it should be in cities with a commercial hub or harbor. I feel like that would be a cool adjustment to Muscat. Nice, another tribal village. I just need two more and I can level this guy up again. Once we have mining, we will chop here. I am continuing to build this builder because I don't have anything else I could do. I couldn't feel, I, I, I don't think I could finish a settler in time. I should be able to buy a warrior from that camp next turn. I'm excited about that prospect. Oh, somebody built the Great Bath, so that's gone. Let's get that warrior. Now, I may be able to sneak in and steal this camp as well, which would be super cool. There's a Zulu. It's an honor to meet you. Exchange information on our capitals. You're all the way over here. I don't have a way to send you a delegation because I don't have the money, but I could maybe sell you this. What would you... Let's use the Quick Deals mod to do this. What would you pay? 120 gold isn't bad. I'll take that 120 gold, and I will immediately send you a delegation with the with your own money. Um... Because we don't, we don't need the amenity from the pearls right now, so I may as well. So I think I can attack once and then heal a little bit, and then we should be fine. Oh, a free scout. Now that is cool. I can send this one to go discover more city-states and land and stuff. It All right, there is foreign trade. Gives me doesn't give me access to anything new or interesting, but I still have access to traders, which is cool. Speaking of traders, I'm kind of tempted to chop one out. Oh, I clicked on a thing, and I think that might have crashed the game. That did crash the game. Okay, got to be careful. 
You get certain UI elements <laughs> open. You click the wrong thing, your game crashes. All right, we re re we reloaded the game. There's mining and foreign trade, as we did before. I will probably chop next turn for the holy sign. I might be able to sneak that camp. You're going to heal up before you continue attacking. Um, yeah, let's let's head towards Celestial Navigation. I should be able to buy a um, I should be able to buy pearls and improve it, which would give me the boost for Celestial Navigation. I don't have to buy it immediately. I may save up for a spearman. I don't know. We're, we're exploring our possibilities here. I think I would like to get early Empire in the not too distant future, but it also might be in my favor to maybe go preserves this game. Because if I have the appeal, and the appeal in my land isn't terrible. Yeah, it's not bad. I do have a lot of mines that I can't get rid of, though, is the unfortunate thing. And I definitely need to have them improved. And so, like, for example, over here, the appeal isn't going to be amazing long term. But the potential for appeal here is still quite good. I want to avoid the lands the Zulu have already explored. So I'm going to kind of, like, dodge them. I kind of walk around them. There's no point basically exploring land that someone else has. You won't find the tribal villages. I assume somebody else has started a great profit. No, actually, no one has. All right, I'm interested now. Now, we could start the holy site right now, but what we're going to do is what we call a pre-chop. When your city is no longer building a thing, um, now, it's important to remember that woods aren't resources, they are features. You can actually chop here, right? So this is going to take me 83 production, which takes me 10 turns with my 8 production per turn because there's a little bit of overflow from this builder. If I come in here and I chop, boosh, now it's actually only going to take me eight turns and I didn't waste the forest underneath the holy site by dropping a district on top of it. So really, really big advantage doing that. Yeah, let's I go. It's a Mia Mario. Think about what tiles we want to improve next. I definitely I definitely should just improve these farms. It's worth it. The extra food means more growth in science. So we'll do that. May as well work them. I do. I, I, I do want this pearls improved, so I'm just going to buy it because it's it's three tiles out and your city your city never grows to a tile that's three tiles out until it has claimed oh i mismoved my warrior there i could have maybe claimed that um yeah your city will never grow to a third tile until it's grown to all second tiles yeah i could have taken that if i hadn't had this guy in auto move that's unfortunate so i lose i lose a camp it's part of the game occasionally you lose stuff like that muscat hasn't closed its borders to me yet and we did find nan madal now nan madal are huge for me this game they're a cultural city state they want me to train a horseman they give you plus one culture from your um theater square buildings and they also give you plus two culture per district on or next to coast or lake tiles and that includes city centers and harbors and since we're planning on a pretty coastal game think of it like a plus two to your districts on coastline, but it's always plus two culture. Very, very powerful. I'm gonna to wanna to make friends with them for sure, which means I almost certainly wanna get my hands on animal husbandry and start making my way towards horseback riding. So I'll have a look and see if I actually find any horses to make horsemen. Oh, and the AI left this camp for me. Yoink, it's mine. Easy. Pop down another thing here because the pearls will culture bomb. Perfection. Another workable tile. Let's improve this because we have to in the long term. Plus it gives me more housing. It allows the city to continue to grow. And then I'll probably get the quarry up as well. Always skirt around the coastline as coupe because I, I find coastline has a really good chance of spawning tribal villages. And you can cover so much coastline as coupe that the probability that you find some tribal villages is actually quite high. Boosh. More faith. Awesome. So that's my pantheon secured. Any tiles I want improved here? No. I want to avoid chopping down forests if I can. Like... The occasional forest chop is fine um, if it's like a really good district, like a plus three holy site like this one was. Um, but if it's not necessary, it's, you know, it should be avoided being attacked here. Let's take the battle cry promotion. I'm going to retreat to this hill so I have a bit of defensive terrain. It'll probably take a couple hits from the spearman before I can do anything. Improve the quarry, which should have also boosted masonry, but I think I already had that boosted. Oh, so a resource bonus from masonry. Plus 10% production towards all buildings and wonders in cities with at least one improved stone resource. That's interesting. That kind of reminds me of Civ 4, where you used to get double production towards ancient era wonders if you had stone improved in your network or whatever very very cool i may actually be able to go for pyramids this game i'm gonna make the attempt yeah i'm gonna head towards masonry and see if i can make the attempt on a pyramid this game because it would be really really cool to have like really really strong and plentiful builders i have another build charge and i don't really have a use for it so i'll just have him sleep i know i'm spending a lot of my early game building infrastructure instead of settlers but that's just how some games go fortify on that tile he should attack you again and then you'll promote next turn 
I have my Pantheon. I could go for God of the Sea, which would be potentially, it would be plus two production in my capital and plus two production down the line. It's just an obviously best Pantheon in this situation because um, I'm not running any Pantheon mods. So like two production in your capital at this stage of the game is, is massive, um, realistically. Similarly, I'm going to try to work the high production tiles. All good. We grow in four turns. We're up to nine production in the capital now, which is a slight improvement. More tribal villages. At least they're tribal or um, barbarian encampments. I can interact with them and like get stuff from them. Oh, Norway's in the game. Nice to meet you. He's all the way over here. Wow. Boom. You are promotable. Awesome. There's good land over here. I could grab like... I think this is actually a different continent. Yeah, so I would like to get a city over here to grab some of these unique luxuries. I think there's, if I look here, here's olives, here's cotton, more olives, more cotton. So there's two of each, so I could get a copy for myself and a copy to sell. And yeah, perfect. I think there would be like at least three cities in and around here, maybe one on this desert coastal. We'll figure it out. You always want to be settling for like multiple reasons first one is usually city quality in the early game city quality is really really important but sometimes you can sacrifice the quality of a city for like a really really important strategic thing we just picked up an envoy and a promotion on this scout the envoy i could put it into yerevan and get like a little bit of extra faith i could put it into muscat and get a little bit of extra gold i feel like the extra faith early game can make like a really really big difference although yerevan's ability is less important to me long term Plus one culture is huge at this phase of the game, whereas plus one faith doesn't do a huge amount for me. I'm going to I'm going to take the plus one faith, though, because I am building a holy site and that like aligns with my early game goals. It's an honor to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, uh, Kublai. Kublai Khan is in the game. We got a couple of boosts. We can start clearing this camp now that he's promoted, slowly promoted him. And we have our holy site, which lines up nicely with the pyramids. So once I have the shrine, I should be able to passively get a... Um, a thing and if i get pyramids i might be able to score myself a golden age be really really cool uh, the nice thing about playing on immortal is yes the ai is still tough but you can kind of relax a bit you can kind of let your hair down you can take it easy you know you can do something like this where you haven't built a settler for 33 turns and you'll still probably be okay in the game all right let's go ahead and clear out this camp i need to in insta give it next turn prevent anything from spawning I will go for state workforce because I would like the 15% boost towards wonders because I do plan to build that soon. And then I'll put my next envoy into Nan Madal so that I get state workforce three turns sooner. And three turns sooner is another three turns of a 15% production boost towards pyramids that I plan to build. One thing that's uh, often underrated about coastal starts is you'll typically actually have like decent gold income from working coastal resources that's something you should really consider a lot more if you haven't been all right we'll pillage this 10 gold and a boost for currency very nice that's the trade route boost a lot of hireables which could work out in my favor to get my military score up oh yeah i kind of changed my ui a little bit let me go ahead and fix that i forgot to have the um show yields in hud ribbon if you're ever wondering how i get this you just turn on the show yields and rub hidden uh the HUD ribbon in the interface settings. And then when you go back out here, you'll be able to see people's military strength. And my military strength is a little bit low, so I'm probably going to buy some units off of the Barbarians. We also found Nazca. Nazca is huge because it allows us to put things on these desert tiles to make adjacent tiles better. So potential for this game is, is rapidly rising as I sort of start to map out the possibilities. But also, I'm kind of venturing into the unknown. Boom, we have met the Inca. Also, this guy is like smile, like this face. It, it feels like, you know... Somebody was caught like in a freeze frame <laughs> at the wrong moment at like a, a family wedding. And he was like trying to snarl at someone and smile at the same time. And it just came off looking really awkward. That's how I feel anyway, whenever I see his face. I have the leader animations turned off because I just find the game runs a little bit better with it. And uh, I mean, it looks worse, obviously. Sure. It's objectively. All right. There's masonry. We have access to the pyramids as well as a bonus from stone. And we have access to stone. So that's like a big advantage here. Um, it'll take us 20 turns to build the pyramids, which is a long ass time. But at the very least, we should come out of building the pyramids with almost a religion. And like the pyramids itself is a big advantage. Plus two culture, an extra builder. It's like, a, it's like basically, it's a big monument, okay? It's a big monument that gives you a builder and makes all your future builders better. And it's been a long time since I've gotten the, um, gotten to play with the pyramids. So I'm kind of excited to try it, to try and go for it. Let's work on Celestial Navigation. I think I will want Harbors this game. Um, it's going to be one of my key districts playing as Coupe. Any sort of coastal stuff is going to be important. Let's promote you with the... I could go for Gorilla and Ambush and stuff like that. But in my opinion, Scouts are exploration units. So Ranger, Ranger, Alpine, and Sentry are all you need. Um, I, I don't think it makes sense to use Scouts as combat units ever, really. Oh, nice. We found a tribal village. 
and Bologna. Bologna. We were the first to find Bologna too. So we actually get that plus one science, which is amazing. I would like a few campuses this game. And we've actually secured ourselves a golden age. So potential monumentality here. I kind of wish I had rushed harbors because I could get a lot of science out of building this harbor, but I'm going for the pyramids. But there's kind of a lot of possibilities that I could have done. Um, but I feel like I've at least made reasonable choices. So I can't like begrudge myself too hard. All right, let's grab this tribal village, extra faith. I'm not going to complain. That might secure me an extra settler in the next era. Tribal village here that's hard to get to because of all the cliffs. So I might have to like swing my way around. Oh, we found Valletta. Valletta is huge too, this game. Allows me to faith purchase um, city center buildings if I can get suzerain of them. Yeah, and it makes them cheaper too. Awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to maybe getting Valletta, especially because this is a faith game and walls usually form a part of a faith game because you get a little bit of tourism from them. And I like I like reliable sources of tourism, like wall tourism, personally. Strong Estate workforce, just... which allows me to take out urban... Now, here's the question. I lose... I have a baseline of nine production. Oh, man, it's actually not worth it unless I can get my production up in here by one, which I guess I could do in theory if I bought this tile and then locked it in. I'd be up to 13.1 production. Now, if I plug in the Core V card, that's, like, worth it. Because that 15% isn't typically counted in. And I think that went down to 13 turns. I'm going to have to go. You know what? If it didn't work, we learned something today. The comments will tell me. Um, I'm actually going to go for a Mani this game. A few people have been telling me about this for a while. And I kind of ignored it. But there's like this cool thing you can do with a Mani. Where you send her on a world tour. tour to get like a ton of early game um, era score. So I'm going to send her over to Yerevan. Yoink the suzerainty. And get an early game... Um, Early game, you know, boost from getting all their exploration, getting the um, friendship from them, and getting the era score early in the next era. Games and Recreation has been changed up too. Let's head towards political philosophy though. I know it's sacrilege. I've, I've gone so long without building a, building a settler compared to my normal games. It's kind of insane actually. All right, pop you over here. We'll take hill terrain boosts. There is a scout here somewhere, and I heard a barb camp appear. Okay, one appeared down here. That might be hard for this warrior to clear. I'll give it a go, because it is worth tech boost and stuff like that. If you can clear a barb camp. Ooh, I sent you the wrong way. Whoops, you meant to go over here. Ancient Era ends in a few turns. Ah, we met Saladin as well. Now that's scary, because if if Grey Prophets start going, Saladin can like snipe the last one, which can be scary. Um, it means you invest a lot into getting a religion and then don't end up with one. Ooh, Lake Retfa. Lake, Lake Retfa was buffed, I think, um, in the not too distant past. Ancient Era ends in one turn. Let's step you over here. Yeah, it's going to be a hard break. Military training boosted. I think that was from cleaning this up. Cool. Nice. We soon have Celestial Navigation, which means we can place down the harbor in my capital. The world enters into the Classical Era. And we have a couple of interesting choices here. Celestial Navigation gives us access to a bunch of cool stuff. We'll explore these choices as we unlock them. But for now, uh, it unlocks the harbor, which is the usual thing that we're used to. It gives us access to... Um, the Great Lighthouse, which is the same. Um, it also allows us to harvest fish and crabs, which doesn't matter because we're playing Maori. It gives us access to wharfs and lighthouses. So I believe the it wharf sure version of the building, I think, is like the city center version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I think I understand how this works now. So if I go to this technology, I can explain it. So you have the, um, you have the trade dock, lighthouse and wharf version so um the wharf version is the version you build inside the city center if the city center is coastal and then the lighthouse version is the version you build inside of the harbor if the city has a harbor so it kind of breaks up the bonuses from the lighthouse as far as i can tell to be to to, to requiring two buildings the trade dock i think they both do the same thing there's no difference between them except the trade dock because it's a harbor building actually increases your citizen yields who work that district. So these things are actually the same thing. And then the fishing dock is the food growth part. Oh, very cool. It actually gives you food on all coast tiles, food on all ocean tiles, once you have cartography, and it gives you plus one production to each fishing boat and fishery in the city. So I think getting the fishing dock here could be a big advantage because that's actually worth, that's worth two production, um, the fishing dock here. Um, in my capital. Now I do want the harbor, so I will be at least placing the harbor right there. Yeah, I'll place the harbor. 
just so we have that locked in as a district we want to build because when you place a when you place a district its price is locked in forever and it'll never get more expensive so you often want to place a district down early into the game um all of these are actually really really good monumentality could be a big advantage for us because we do have a reasonable early game faith income and it would maybe allow me to make up for the fact that I haven't been building settlers. I've been fo so focused on other things that I could snag myself a couple of settlers early here and just start like filling out my land as I'm working hard on things like, you know, pyramids. So I think I'd go ahead and buy the, buy the settler here, continue to work on the pyramids and then we choose our research. Uh, let's, let's, let's kind of clean out some of these early game techs. So I'll pick up irrigation, riding, and animal husbandry. We have another governor title, and I don't want to do a lot of chopping this game with Magnus. I kind of like the idea of maybe doing something with Liang here. Um, Pingala is like the usual choice. I kind of want to go for non... I want to go for unusual choices here this game, and go for things that I normally wouldn't. We could go for Reyna, because the Reyna... Reyna actually synergizes really, really well with Coupe in general. We could push hard for a we could push hard for a purchasing game with Reyna. Like we go here. Here's my big problem with Reyna. You want her to sit still to generate you as much gold as possible, but you want to move her around to spend that gold. So there's like this push pull relationship with her that makes things difficult. I could go for a Moksha game um, and go for faith purchasing on districts, which would give me a use of my faith because I don't really care about spreading my religion if I get one. And he will also help me passively spread my religion. I could also go for Pingala just to catch up with the AI, but I'm I'm more interested in like. Playing Playing around with mechanics because the difficulty is slightly lower so I, I have the sort of the room um i have the room to kind of play a little bit less optimally and explore new ideas and so i want i want to take that opportunity if i can now uh, there's irrigation the hanging gardens aren't Not different more. we have access to the plantation which has a few small changes there's also the rice paddy field which is um Plus one food, plus one additional food, as long as the city has ex access to at least one rice, plus one food from access to fresh water and per adjacent aqueduct and dam once feudalism is discovered. Okay. Receives and provides food adjacency bonus as if it were a farm once replaceable parts is researched and it gives you plus one housing. So this is just like, if you have rice, this is like um, just a high food, a high food building, which is kind of cool. I don't think I have rice in any of my cities. Let's have a look. We'll do a search. Oh, I do actually. Over here, I have rice, so I might be able to play around with rice paddy stuff a little bit. Could be interesting, especially because I I don't have a way to like get rid of rice. I can't I can't delete it. I just have to keep it. I haven't done any city planning, which is going to be a little bit of my downfall here. Well, there's a really there's a really really good campus here, for sure. Like that's just an obvious choice. Oh, actually, it looks like they nerfed um campus adjacency a little bit so maybe this isn't a slam dunk campus like here this campus should be plus two but it's only plus one from reef which i'm not sure how i feel about the major adjacency from reef was one of like the coolest parts of the game i mean maybe it needed to be different sure i can maybe accept that explanation um how about this maybe maybe we settle here we settle our city here we obviously go for the harbor uh maybe we go for an aqueduct to the city a cistern is what it's called actually a district can provide the city with a source of fresh water from adjacent river local ocean. Oh, it doesn't have yes for fresh water. Prevents drought. Must be built adjacent city center. Military engineers can be used. Okay. Maybe we do something like this. Plus four harbor. One, two, three. Uses up this land appropriately. Only leaves a little bit of dead land. We definitely want two more districts in here. And ideally it would be something like the Mare. Um, I also want an, a city with an industri industrial zone next to a river. So one, two, three. Maybe I could do something like this if i settle on this plains hill i could aqueduct to this tile um i can't get rid of bonus resources that's something i have to consider that means that quarry is staying forever which means industrial zone here might make sense i don't know what the industrial zone gets bonuses from now aqueduct lumber mills all that stuff obviously we go for a harbor in this city a plus three and then i guess we also go for a theater square there's a civic square is there something else that i'm missing maybe the fairgrounds it would be kind of cool to go for the um go for the coliseum in one of these cities lots of cultures lots of amenities maybe this is the city to do it in i know a plan is starting to formulate what if what if we went for it what if we went for the fairground and we tried to build the coliseum here i'm pretty sure it needs to be adjacent to a fairground or tourney fairground uh yeah what if we what if we went for the thing it only hits three cities right now one two 
But I could fit another city somewhere over here. Up in the north. And then it would hit four. Which is a pretty good number of cities for that to hit. And I think if this is going to be my second city to build something, it's where I'm going to build the fairground. I'll send the builder after him too. Just to uh, give him an assist. I want to start clearing out some of those pins by actually building things that are on those pins. Boom, there is All writing. So you have access to the campus. The we kind of went over those, how those buildings are different. When do I get the pyramids? Five turns. Five turns. I can't wait till we have them. Let's see. Ah, okay. So here is the commercial hub. We have the choice between the mint, which gives you plus one trade route capacity, naturally. Uh, it gives you plus one gold per governor promotion established in the city. Provides plus two loyalty per turn to your cities within six tiles. Does not stack. International trade routes from this city gain plus one gold. It gives you plus one gold, a citizen slot, and a great merchant points per turn. As well as plus two gold to citizen yields on this city. I mean, that's pretty cool. So this is like the taller version of the building. What does this one do? Uh, plus two... Uh, plus one trade route capacity. International trade routes gain plus one gold. So that's the same. So it's missing the extra gold from governor promotions. And this one has two citizen slots. And the citizen slots actually gain plus four gold. And you'll see here that citizen yields in this mod actually give you plus one food. Normally a citizen takes two food to maintain. So a citizen slot that gives you plus one food means they cost half as much maintenance, essentially. Which means it's much easier to run specialists without having to build a ton of farms. Which also means, generally, that, you know, running specialists is a little bit more attractive. They're just easier to do. Which is, you know, a pretty big advantage. That's kind of a cool, cool change to the mod that I've not seen before. Oh, Sweden. Man, there's so many things to unlock. I think it would be good to maybe unlock iron. <laughs> At this point, it's probably a good idea. Although, where do I get my Toa? I get my Toa at construction, and that's also where industrial zones come up. Uh, just for a bit of crack. Yeah, let's, let's head towards construction. Let's get the watermelon stuff. Wait, actually, how good is the watermelon? What, what is this built in? It's built in the industrial zone. Interesting. Ah, new deals available. So Kublai Khan wants to sell me jade for one gold per turn, and you want to sell me oranges for that. Yeah, deal. Let's see, who will buy this? Seven gold per turn for my pearl. So I just traded three gold per turn and a resource for seven gold per turn and two resources. So that was like a good switch. It's always, always good to be looking out for trade deals with the AI, because the AI tends to give you favorable trade deals because they have so many resources, they can just kind of splash them around. Singapore is a really cool city state because they give you plus two production for each foreign civilization that your cities have a trade route to, which is kind of cool. And um, they want me to recruit a great profit, which is definitely doable. Also, I'm suzerain of Yerevan, which gave me the era score, I believe. And we are in the classical era, so let's go ahead and get Amani and reassign her over to Nan Madal. I think this is called the Amani World Tour. It's where you send her all over the map to try to get suzerainties of as many city-states as possible in quick succession to generate era score. Now, is this the best place I could place this city? Um, one, two, three. There's a plus two campus there. What if I move this city one tile to the left? Or one tile, yeah, one tile to the left and then put a city center here instead. Or a campus here instead. It's a plus three campus. It's kind of cool. It would mean I'd have to move this city st center a little bit, but that's fine. Still in range of this. I do lose a forest here, but I, I gain other things. So you always win some, you lose some. That's how it works. There's Mexico City, which will extend the range of my um, regional buildings, which is kind of exciting. Are there any like specific missions that these guys want? Great merchant, train a horseman, trade route, great profit, trade route, trade route. Train a Toa, train a Toa. So a couple people want me to train a Toa. So that's definitely something I want to work on. So training a horseman and a Toa are pretty high on my priority list in order to build my up, build up my relationships with these city states. Oh, okay, go away, Gally. Please, no bully, my poor little scout. All right, let's settle in place. Skadoosh. Yoink Reno. Nice. Boom. Pick up the mine, plus one production, and it's a cultured tile. The city will expand nice and quick. We have a few choices here. I personally like the idea of going for... Mm, man, it's it's tough because there's a lot we could do in the city. I don't think... Man, I would like... The city has low housing. So that's something I'll need to address pretty early into the city's life cycle, which means I'll definitely need a granary or a fishing dock. And the fishing dock is a little bit more expensive takes a little bit longer than the granary but the big advantage of the fishing dock is that it improves these fish but i also need a galley over here to be able to defend these fish from the barbarians so the granary is the safer choice i think so i'm going to go granary plus if you haven't seen my monument and granary video um you'll know that 
in a coastal city, granary is generally the better choice if you have low housing because a lot of the reason that coastal cities struggle to grow in the early game is from the lack of the housing and not a lack of food. I want my pyramids, dude. There we the go. Nice. We get a free builder. All builders gain plus one improvement. And we also have you know, the pyramids. So that is now just very, very slowly generating a very slight amount of tourism. If I could find the map mode. Here you go. Three tourism per turn, which isn't a huge amount. But when you kind of stretch that over the course of an entire game, like there's probably like another 250 turns in this game at most, and it's going to get plus one tourism per era. It, it adds up. It adds up for sure. Like there'll probably be, you know, five to ten tourists on this by the end of the game, I would estimate. Um, but the, with the completion of the pyramids, we can continue to think about infrastructure in my capital. I reckon it would be like really, really powerful here to just ignore units. But I think I have to like get like maybe a galley and a quadrireme to just be able to defend and control my coastal waters. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll come back and look at infrastructure. We'll, we'll switch our government around next turn too. Now, I don't know what to do with this builder. Uh, well, there is a farm here that I have to improve, so I may as well. Plus, it's on the thingy tile, so it's worth it. Nice. So there we go. We have political philosophy. And I think I'm going to plug in classical republic, I think. Autocracy is cool because it has some advantages. Um, I need to I need to select a city that's going to do all my government plaza -y stuff, like the diplomatic quarter, the government plaza, and stuff along that nature. There's also actually a floodplain over here, so I may want to turn this into like a government -y. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of making this like the seat of my government. So I think my next settler is heading over this way um, for sure. Now, where exactly do I want to settle if I'm going to do this? Maybe on the cotton. On the... Mm, no production on the cotton. On the cotton does capture a lot of the luxuries, though. And we'll just have to use builders and gold to try to boost this city along. Yeah, builders, gold, and traders will be used to just make this city better, I think. We'll accept that. I think I can buy that settler soon. Which means, I think... Government wise, we will be going for Classical Republic for the extra great people points. I want to plug in Urban Planning. I'm also going to plug in Revelation so I get my religion ever so slightly faster. Urban Planning, we're not building a wonder right now and it would be good if we could build settlers slightly faster. Although actually, oh no, I can't have Revelation because I want to plug in Maritime Industries, which means that makes my life kind of complicated actually. Charismatic Leader. Tile purchasing could be useful here. Yeah, let's take tile purchasing. Might be able to like swing my gold to go a little bit further. Um, but yeah, on that note, with the completion of the pyramids, with the setup of our government, with the decision to perhaps settle over here, I'm going to call that the end of the episode and the end of this video. I love you all very much. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and become a member of the channel. All that jazz. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.